We upload a new episode of Jin School weekly and bring you in-depth character breakdowns. If you are new to this channel, please be sure to like and subscribe for more content. One of the first things we noticed while playing Season 3 is that Zen 1-3 gives Jin a new ender in open spaces, which helps to maintain momentum after a combo, at the expense of one point less damage. This ender gives Jin a new set of 50-50 Okizeme mix-ups, which seem to be a trend every time he gets something new since Tekken 7's release. A week after release, a lot of Jin mains have already considered replacing Zen 1-3 in every single combo, because it's very consistent and hard to drop. We discourage this practice and strongly advise that you learn to microdash for several reasons. The most important part, of course, is there are particular parts in stages where Zen 1-3 is going to carry too much to the wall. Jin won't be able to get a wall combo either, which reduces your combo damage potential. In this case, the classic microdash combo is far more effective. Another reason is the common wall ender standing 2, down back 2 to 3 can become inconsistent on octangular stages because either they aren't launched high enough compared to back 2 1 or it sends them off axis. For this particular reason, we advise you to not fully trade in all your other options and replace them with Zen 1 3. While it may make things easier superficially, it just won't bring your Jin to an optimal level where the character himself has so much more to offer when you can use the micro dash combos. Despite this, Zen 1-3 is an amazing move, and it gives Jin new opportunities for 50-50 mix-ups. The opponent has to tech when the move is used as an ender, either by holding back to back roll, or by pressing a button to side roll. If they don't, moves such as down 4 become guaranteed, and they can't wake up backwards without taking a guaranteed hit in the process. If you're on point, Jin can also pick up characters for a reset into another combo. If you're positioned to the opponent's side, Zen 1-3 has the opportunity to pick up for a combo with wall standing 4 or back 2-1. Just remember, this is not guaranteed and only works if the opponent doesn't tech. Zen 1-3 opens new avenues for Orki diversification. Be wary that Orki is still Jin's weakest side. Even with the Kha'Zix setup, Jin lacks a threatening move to compel opponents to stand, such as Devil Jin's Demon Steel Petal. The ground game. Tekken is heavily defined by how you play the neutral. However, it's often decided by how well someone understands the ground game. To begin the ground game, you need to knock your opponent into a down state. There are two types of knockdowns in Tekken. Soft and hard knockdowns. While you are being juggled, any soft knockdown can be teched. If you don't take a soft knockdown, you enter a down state. Certain moves can also force you to enter a down state, either from standing or from a juggle. In the case of a soft knockdown, you can take away by pressing a punch or kick button. Alternatively, pressing back or forward as you touch the ground will perform a ground tech, forcing your character to stand straight up. Press any punch button during a soft knockdown to tech into the background. Press any kick button during a soft knockdown to tech into the foreground. Unlike in previous Tekkens, holding back is actually a good option now. The back roll has invulnerability in face up feet towards situations. Finally, if you hold forward, you'll perform a quick recovery attack. While it's safe on block, the hitbox is very poor, and you're extremely vulnerable on whiff. The opponent not using ground techniques on a soft knockdown has advantages and disadvantages. If you're too focused on standing, the next mix-up option becomes harder to block. There are two particular knockdown positions in Tekken, with both having ramifications when you're on the ground. These positions are face up and face down. Similarly, the opponent can also be feet towards or feet away. This means that there are four possible positions for your opponent to be on the ground. Depending on what position the defender is, they have certain wake-up options. The primary one are wake-up low and mid kicks, which are available in every position. When they are facing up with feet towards, wake-up mid kicks and wake-up low kicks are both minus 12 on block. While they are negative, Jin is one of the few characters who cannot reliably punish wake-up mid kicks. 
Unless your opponent is cornered, Jin is unable to reliably punish these get-up kicks, giving your opponent an incentive to abuse them. Despite this, Jin's parry allows him to launch the wake-up mid-kicks. While in this position, Jin can increase his punish range by sidestepping left on this kind of knockdown. Once he's off-axis, if your opponent chooses to use a get-up mid-kick and you do block it, you're able to reliably punish it. Nevertheless, these are only two options. While in feet towards, your opponent can also use spring attacks. These are minus 19 on block if they hit shallow. However, the deeper they hit, the more safe they become, to a maximum of minus 10. Some characters have different spring attacks than the regular ones, like King and Armor King. Regardless of how you use the spring attack, it will always be unsafe, and they'll be left back turned. In this situation, Season 1 setups can be used, and they're guaranteed. Other characters, such as Paul, don't have a spring attack, but instead have a cross chop. The cross chop is plus on block, but similar to the recovery attack, doesn't avoid the mix-up at all, leaving Paul vulnerable after knockdowns no matter how he falls. For this reason, Jin can use 2-4 as a punish to force the ground game on Paul and take the advantage. Toe kicks, also known as recovery kicks. These are minus 16 on block and recover standing. Forward roll, with a read, isn't too risky. Back rolls, these are slower but have significant invulnerability and can avoid most moves in the neutral, especially linear ones. By pressing 1, the character will side roll into the background. By pressing down 1 instead, the character will side roll into the foreground. These are tricky because after a side roll, your opponent stands on their own and they still get to use mid and low kicks as they get up. However, by holding the down button, you'll stay on the ground after doing the roll. This will switch them from face up to face down and vice versa and gives them total control of the roll, but they can't roll again until they stand. As you've noticed, these are far too many options from one position, and Jin is not strong on Okizeme. This is the position where your opponent has the most freedom. When your opponent is feet away, wake up low kicks are minus 13. While Jin can't launch punish them, you can while standing 1-2. More importantly, wake up mid kicks from this position are minus 14 on block. Since Jin in Season 3 now has a 14 frame easy mode wall bounce, your opponent will be hesitant to throw this out near a wall. This gives you the opportunity to make big reads and go for low parries instead. If the opponent is in a face down position, the game changes, since their options are severely limited. Spring attacks can no longer be performed, and their wake up kicks are significantly slower. This is where it gets interesting. Waking up with an attack is dangerous, and waking up backwards leaves you completely exposed. Standing straight up is also risky, since you have to turn back around. These wake up mid kicks are heavily punishable. Be sure to memorize those, as they'll be important later on in this guide. When your opponent is face down, feet away, they are considered to be in the worst possible position. Wake up mid kicks are now minus 19 on block. Wake up low kicks are minus 16 on block. Since these attacks are so dangerous, experienced players will rarely use them, giving Jin a chance to start up his Oki. When your opponent is face down, feet towards, they are still punishable, however less so. Wake up mid kicks are minus 14 on block, meaning they are launch punishable by 14 frame launches. Wake up low kicks are minus 15 on block, being launched even by hop kicks. In previous Tekkens, Jin used to be an Okizeme monster. He had the best options to cover almost all aspects of the wake up system, even if he couldn't punish wake up mid kicks. In Tekken 7, the wake up and ground game was revised, and Jin's wake up tools were significantly nerfed. While Tekken 7 Jin is a neutral monster, his Oki game is the worst it's been. He's lost his best tool to threaten people on the ground, which was forward 4. Now that we've seen how the ground game works, it's time to strap on those red boots of the edgelord himself. 
and give you a super secret breakdown on Jin's properties. First, let's look at all the Jin tools which help him manipulate Okizeme. Jin can combine them and get good results while manipulating the opponent's position. These tools include the infamous Hell Sweep, also known as LLRK. Once this connects, Jin's granted a back turn combo, and the opponent is put in a feet away position. He can use this to manipulate where the opponent will be, giving him a control of Orki. Back 2-1, the move with the higher calling. Back 2-1 outclasses Zen 1-3 by being mid-mid and safe on block. The first hit can crush certain highs, and if it hits an airborne opponent, they'll be flipped 180 degrees. If they're face up, they'll become face down, and if they're face down, they'll become face up into a soft knockdown position. Why is this important? Well, if your opponent isn't paying attention to their wake up position, Jin can start taking them away. This can make matches and certain opponents easier to deal with. Let's look at an example. If Jin does a combo and he uses a regular knockdown, even if the opponent doesn't tech, they're face up. Being face up has a lot of evading options and the wake up options are safe against Jin. The threat of spring attacks is also present. If you do the same combo but change the ender, they will be face down feet towards. While in this position, they can't use spring attacks anymore and they can't tech forward. Mid and low get up kicks can be performed as well as standing by holding backwards or up. All of these options are unsafe, slow to come out, and launch punishable. An experienced player will most likely not press buttons and will try to roll, giving Jin guaranteed hits. An easy way to pressure, positional advantage, you name it. As a Jin player, most of the time you don't want your opponent to stay on the ground, but they feel obliged to stay there since it's where Jin is weakest currently. Staying grounded is far better than taking into 50-50 mix-ups all the time. Still, Back 2-1 is an extremely dangerous Okizeme tool, and it has a tiny secret. While it can still be teched, Jin can control which side they are going to tech. A character being flipped from face up feet away will always tech into the background. It doesn't matter what attack buttons they press. The opposite is true for face up feet towards. They will always tech into the foreground, no matter what attack button they press. They can also tech by pressing back or up, which will leave them in a crouch position for a short time. If the Jin times a well placed mid in that specific situation as they tech, the next attack becomes unblockable. The unblockable is hard to get due to distance, but Jin can still make use of this situation by applying frame traps. Moves such as running 3, Zen 3 plus 4, forward forward 4, and forward 3 3 will frame trap and force the opponent to press buttons after they block. You can also attempt a 50-50 mix-up. By pressing up as soon as they enter the down state, they'll stand back up without any of these repercussions. They're still going to take guaranteed hits such as forward floor, down two, up close, or a wave dash 50-50 mix-up. Zen 4 gives guaranteed grounded moves such as 3 slide 4 and also puts the opponent into a face up, feet away position. If they're not paying attention and try to stand by holding back or up, moves such as crouch dash 1 can be set up to launch the opponent since they are mostly on reverse guard position. Down back 2-3. This move changed in Tekken 7. It spikes opponents onto the ground. On an airborne hit however, it's all they can do, forcing them into a 50-50. Of course, this doesn't work mid-screen. If they backroll, there'll be too much distance to close if Jin needs to start quick offense right away. But at the wall, it's a very powerful move, which will flip them into a face-down situation. Due to the disadvantage, everyone and their mother will most likely tech roll to avoid dangerous Orki. Instead, they will have to answer to the low-mid mix-up game at the wall, favoring Jin. Now, let's look at the more specific moves which will automatically give Jin a better Orki position from neutral. We've already discussed down back 2 3 on counter hit, but it's mostly used as a combo ender. Counter hit down back 4. In season 3, down back 4 becomes an Okizeme tool. On counter hit, it'll spike your opponent to the ground for a guaranteed hit. If you take this free hit, Jin's Orki ends as they're pushed further away. If you don't, you get free Orki positioning and you're free to try as many options as you like. If down back 4 counter hits near a wall, Jin still gets guaranteed Okizeme after he hits down 2 at the wall, since it becomes untechable. Forward forward 4. 
This is a 20 frame startup mid, which is plus on block, but when it connects as a counter hit, it spikes the opponent down. This spike forces the opponent into a face down position, giving Jin a 50-50 since they are unable to tech. Forward forward 4 is now best used when you land a counter hit down back 4, since it will leave them far closer to Jin mid screen compared to other options. This is not advisable to use near a wall since the follow up is far slower, and while the hit is guaranteed, it will hit them on the ground, allowing them to tech right away. Down 2 works better in this situation. Forward 3-3. Three, three. This move isn't used very often, but it's actually plus 6 on block. When it does hit, it spikes the opponents to the ground, giving you a free grounded hit. You'll hear more about this move in a future video. Down back 3 gets a special mention, since on hit, it puts the opponent into a face up, feet away position, which is usually good for Orki. Since this move is so situational, not many people use it. Finally, there are two moves which can be used in combos for a better positioning on Orki and prevent your opponent from teching. Down forward 4. This was intentionally buffed in Tekken 7 to act as a counter hit launcher. It's infamously known as the spike move. This move can be used after a full combo on a screw status to bury the opponents into the ground and prevent them from teching. Most of the good Tekken 7 Jin Orki setups come from this tool. Cherry Berry Mango, a prominent Jin player, has demonstrated how dangerous a spike and ground hitting forward 4 were. There was a time where Jin could get a guaranteed forward 4 after a spike, which was eventually nerfed since he used to get a 50 50 afterwards. Still, there's a lot that Jin can do with this move on Orki as long as the player has the execution for it. It must come specifically from a Hell Sweep, which will spike them right into an unfavorable position without the option. Attack. Finally, while standing 1-2, which is Eddie's golden boy and the bringer of the widely known Kha'Zix setup, this setup allows Jin to spike opponents onto the ground with an instant while standing move into a 50-50. The opponent is forced to guess. If they stay on the ground, Zen 4 will clip them, and if they try to roll, Zen 2 will hit them. These are Jin's or key options, but you need to understand how your opponent is planning to wake up before you can apply it. Back 2-1 lets you dictate how your opponent wakes up, but it's only a soft knockdown. Compared to down forward 4 and while standing 1-2, which give you a hard knockdown and disable teching. We're not done, we're just getting started, so we save the best for last. The Orki War Game. Whenever Jin does a combo that ends at the wall, if it's a high wall splat, the likely option will be standing 2 to down back 2 2 3, maximizing your damage. Unfortunately, this is bad for your Orki, as the opponents can tech. If they tech to your right, which is Jin's weak side, and duck, your mids will likely whiff, since they don't have great tracking. Also, they can react in time to see a crouch dash 3 or crouch dash 4 mix up and avoid being hit by down forward 1, as well as forward 4 3, which doesn't track at all. This is a problem, so in order to fix it, Jin has to realign himself with a small step, delay his input slightly, do a forward forward 3 delay, which will realign, or you can call forth the ancient powers of forward 4. <laughs> Forward 4 is amazing to solve this problem, since it's a mid and turns out to have better tracking than most of Jin's other mids, including forward forward 3 and forward 3-3 three three on their own. If the opponent is planning on tacking and crouching to avoid mix-ups, forward 4 into Zen will put them under a mix-up right away, one which is far more dangerous. Being at a frame disadvantage with Jin in Zen right in your face is a very unpleasant situation. You can also change your combo ender and finish with forward 4 instead. Even if they tech trying to avoid your nonsense, down back 223, down forward 1 now tracks far better on Oki, giving you a side wall splat. Changing the ender to 123 makes down 4 guaranteed. You can't tech, side roll, spring attack, or just lie down. Apparently in Season 3, forward 4 has been buffed slightly. Whenever the opponent tries to stand up in any form after 123, forward 4 will be guaranteed. The only way to avoid being hit by forward 4 after 123 at the wall is by side rolling or staying grounded. This guarantees a down 4. If you suspect your opponent will side roll instead, 
use back 3 forward, which hits players trying to side roll out of the corner, leaving them in a 50-50 Zen mix-up. By slightly delaying the Zen follow-up, you realign with your opponents if they tech, leading to side wall splats. A side wall splat gives Jin another opportunity for Orki, depending on how they hit the wall. According to Cherryberry Mango, it comes down to understanding the angles. Since we're terrible at it and rarely used it before, we searched deep into South Korea for a Jin or Kizeme specialist and for a better explanation of this Orki setup. We managed to contact one of the Jin gods and Orki specialists, Remilia Scarlet. He stated, In South Korea, this is known as reverse guarding. We asked Remilia what's the secret behind the reverse guard. Remilia was kind enough to explain how it works in theory. In Tekken, if a character wakes up with a mid or low kick, if any character times their jump correctly, they are able to jump over either of these wake up moves and gain an opportunity to utilize reverse guard setups. The same concept is used at the wall whenever Jin gets a side wall splat. The down two jab into while standing two will only work if the opponent is so eager to stand, they'll do a wake up mid or low kick while in the panic of a side wall splat. If they crouch guard, they'll escape the setup due to the distance of the hit being larger. The setup itself is very difficult to get, which is one of the reasons you won't see it very often. Continuing, Crouch Dash 4 is another move which can be angled to lead to bigger combos, but this one is extremely situational. They need to be immovable, as Jin slightly realigns for a back 2-1 pickup after doing Crouch Dash 4 into up forward 2 for a temporary wall splat. Another Jin god who demonstrated this possibility is the Dr. Dre of Jin Kazama, which is the Japanese Jin tech guru, which even the most prominent Jin players will visit when they're trying to explore new things. Vri, otherwise known as Uedo or Vri Solutions. While this combo is heavily dependent on angle, there is one more which is very well known and works where the Jin is in rage and allows the character to perform a hell sweep straight into a rage art. Jin can also do down back 2-3 after a hell sweep at the wall, but it needs to be timed. Zen 4 is a launcher at the wall since Tekken 6. In Tag 2, Jin would get a bound Tag Assault combo at the wall, which was explained by the main man. But in Season 3, he can do other follow-ups, such as while standing 4 into forward 4 mix-ups, or while standing 4 into 1 plus 2, both being guaranteed. You can make things even more interesting by doing the old Tag 2 follow-up, which is now known as the Kazakh setup, which leads to guaranteed Oki, Zen or no Zen, due to both characters being at the wall, if done correctly, this can lead to a lot of damage. If a max range and off-axis Zen 4 is achieved at the wall, then while standing 2 into down back 2 to 3 becomes a guaranteed combo instead. It's pretty rare to see Jin players use this setup, since it seems to be more reliant on playstyle. One of the few who still utilize this to this very day is Orange. When Jin corners someone at the wall, the way he knocks them down matters a lot. If the wrong option is used on wake up, down forward 1 4 is going to wall splat opponents, since they can stand a back turn, but it still leaves them vulnerable. Turning but still vulnerable, susceptible to ducking, worth punishing all these, Jin can use several combos whenever he lands a down forward 1 4 at the wall. As in previous seasons, it's all about the angles. When directed with a wall, jab into down back 2 2 3 will do damage and lead to better Okizeme setup timings, such as the Zen mix up. However, 3-1, Zen 1-2 deals a lot more damage in this particular situation since the combo hit counter is quite short. Whenever he wall splats a character directly, 3-1, Zen 1-2 will likely deal more damage than the regular ender. If Jin is angled and hits a down forward 1-4, then he is allowed to re-splat after he backdashes into a down 3 plus 4, or back 2-1 in particular cases. He can finish the combo with a standard wall combo ender, or use the season 2 enders, which will likely deal more damage in this situation at the sacrifice of some Okizeme. Jin can also use the Sabaki parry, which is done by pressing down forward 1 plus 2, and parries jabs straight into a wall splat. This isn't particularly reliable, but if you're against an opponent who's trigger happy when their back's to the wall, it can be very useful. Runner Black does this from time to time. With all that Jin can do in Season 3, learning how to control your wake up options is a must, and on any stage with walls, recognizing when a wake up option was used and from what position is key. If you know it very well, your opponent is always facing the risk of getting wall balanced for their poor judgment. An example of this is down 1, which tracks to Jin's weak side, and forward 1 plus 2, which tracks to the other side. So, any move on hit allows for forward 1 plus 2 to be nearly unsteppable at the wall. 
At the wall, the more advantage Jin has, such as moves like forward 3-3, which is plus 6, mean that stepping is not really an option. I'm Opaque, and this was Jin School Season 3, Orki Manipulation.